on April 19th, we have the sun moving into the sign of Taurus. Now, the sun was in the sign of Aries, which was fiery, fast-paced, uh, initiatory. We just had the eclipses with it. So it's it was like this new moon on steroids, initiating and starting new beginnings in that area of our life. Now, with the sun moving into Taurus, the energy becomes more stable, more grounded. It reflects our power. It reflects our confidence. And it wants to create stability, wealth, and comfort with the new beginnings that we've initiated. Now that the sun is now leaving the fast-paced sign of Aries, we're going to now look and place more importance on slowing down, on enjoying life. This transit is also in a square to the sign of Pluto. And so the planet of Pluto, the sun it always represents yourself, um, authority, your power. Pluto represents power, it represents control, and in, in a square, uh, it could represent um, possible power struggles. A uh, square is this challenging aspect where Pluto uh, brings about these extreme forces in forms of other people and their circumstances. A square is a 90 degree angle where we have um, what you want and what you need and having to integrate both of those energies. It's not giving in completely of one and the other. It's how do I learn to work with and use and integrate this energy in my daily life. Now, this can be seen as a crisis or a breakdown as Pluto wants to push you forth to transform your ego, your identity, and possibly your life direction with the eclipses moving you forward fast and furious. Pluto is going to show you many challenges so that you can master your power. This can be a learning opportunity. It can also be seen as a test to see if you will stand up for yourself. The goal is for you to find a balance between not being assertive to, that you overpower other people, but that you're assertive enough. It's in power conflicts. It's It could be with the law. It can be with authority figures. It could be with within your personal relationships and uh, with immediate family or with other people on a on a daily basis. This can feel like you are receiving these personal attacks on your integrity. Um, there, this is going to be an opportunity that you're going to be able to face these challenges and accept this rebirthing process, that it gives you a healthier ego, a stronger willpower, it'll give you self-assertiveness, all of this is in order to enable you to attain these new goals with a new sense of purpose, of vitality, with enthusiasm, in order to create a stable, more secure environment, because that's what Taurus wants. So, hi, I'm your astrologer, Patricia Tate, and this is your Sun in Taurus 2024 astrology forecast. To get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. Now let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, the eclipse has just occurred in your first house of self. Now remember, this was a huge solar eclipse. It, it was a new moon on steroids. We had the North Node, Mercury, Venus, Chiron, and the Sun and the Moon both in your first house. The first house represented your identity, your personality. It represents you being seen, your outlook. It's truly having you focus on you and mastering those skills skills. So now we have these new seeds planted for the future. Um, it's, it's a push for you to move forward with everything that has to do with all about you. Now with the sun moving into your second house, the second house represents your self-worth, your cash, your property, your skill set, your money, your movable property, your talents, your skills. The second represents your income, your possessions. It could be your financial condition. It literally is everything that has to be about you in order to make you feel safe and secure in order to, in order to move forward. The problem comes with the square to Pluto. Pluto in your 11th house. The 11th house represents your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, the people that you network with in order to achieve these. So this is where the problem lies. You are trying to create stability and security you're trying to assert your willpower and to create this confidence with, I'm ready to create stability, wealth, and comfort in my life. 
and now I feel like I'm getting pushback with um, authority figures or within my groups that I belong to. This could also be groups that you participate in for work. This could be in networking groups. This could be in your um, like um, star family or your kindred spirits or peers or like it has to do with people that you share beliefs or are in networks and groups that you intentionally want to join or are part of for pleasure, joy, and work. So it's it's the networking part of your life. And so this, with Pluto here, this is representing power, control, power struggles within these groups. Pluto is going to bring these extreme forces um, in the form of other people's opinions and values in these circumstances that you're going to have to say, where am I in this group? Where am I with their thoughts, their beliefs? Because my belief system has changed. Um, Pluto brings these extreme forces in the form of other people, their circumstances, wanting there to be this crisis point, a breakdown in order for you to transform uh, your ego, your identity, your, your life direction in order for you to make things more secure for your your, yourself. It's about you saying, I have to face this challenge. I have to be able to master where do I own my power? How can I step into my power to move forward with um, creating, uh, creating stability? This might feel like a personal attack on your integrity, on your beliefs, your opinions, uh, this could be seen as after you've integrated it and navigated the the, the tug and the, the push and the pull between this as a rebirthing in order to give you this healthier ego, um, stronger willpower, and you being more um, self-reliant on yourself and uh, self-assertiveness in order for you to help attain your goals. Um, a new sense of vitality, this enthusiasm, in order for you to create this stable work environment um, for what are you, like what is your value? What is your worth? What are your opinions? What are your thoughts? And standing in them and saying, no, this is who I am. And if I have to leave this group, I, I will. And if I have to lead this group, I will, but it's integrating this challenge between what others feel and what you feel. And it's you standing on, standing in, in, in your own power, standing up with your own divinity and saying, this is who I am. This is who I am evolving and changing and growing into and um, accepting of that power and, and stepping into the confidence and creating the stability and wealth for yourself, knowing what you are bringing to the table. It is in a beautiful trine to your career so that we know that everything that you're going through here could have to do with authority figures or you being seen as a voice of authority and asking for what you are worth to move forward with. So Aries, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, I absolutely love this for you because this is in your first house of your identity, uh, your outlook, how people see you, you being seen in the outside world. It's your personality, your appearance. It's taking the eclipse energy that has been going on in your 12th house of self-sabotage, like ridding yourself of it, stepping into your own power and facing your fears. You just had this major eclipse here and it was revealing um, secrets. It was revealing the hidden. It was tapping you into your own intuition intuition, dreams, past lives, um, this could be the Akashic records. It's you tapping into um, inner healing, your connection to the, the divine and transcendence, taking those deep journeys. And now with the sun moving into your first house, it's how do I create stability with this? How can I create emotional security with this? This is going to reflect this power and confidence in order for you to create comfort within 
Who are you? Who are you bringing to the table here? Now, um, Pluto, Pluto is at the top of your chart. It represents authority figures, bosses, um, you seen as an authority figure, people wanting to like literally squash your energy or hold you down. The 10th house is um, not just career and legacy, it's but it's about um, uh, your reputation, it's your goals, it's where you wanna make your mark on society. The 10th house is literally like the top of the chart. It is your uh, what you want to achieve, your professional life, your ambitions, your goals, and it's how you want other people to see you as an authority figure. And so there's this push and pull between the sun representing yourself saying, I need to take all the lessons and the things that I know and that I've learned and that um, I need to step into my power. I need to step into my divinity. I know who I am. The Pluto square represents this power struggle between who are you, what is your worth, and people possibly not valuing you. Pluto in your 10th house can really push uh, for these extreme forces of other people, these circumstances of, of, of a crisis or a breakdown that will force a transformation of your ego, your identity, and your life direction of, do I really belong here? Um, do they value me here? Now remember the 10th house, it's not just your career and your life path, but it's the legacy that you want to leave behind. And you digging deep to say, is this really, is this really where I wanna be? And is this really the legacy that I wanna, how I want people to see and know me? This could feel like there are people who are attacking your personal integrity, not embracing who you are transforming into and saying, oh, you're changing. I would look at it as, oh, you're healing and you are stepping into this. And so this is a rebirthing process uh, that can give you this healthier ego, uh, a stronger willpower, uh, more self-assertiveness in order to stand in who you are. It's going to enable you a greater sense of, I can achieve my goals. I now have a sense of vitality and enthusiasm because I want to, I want to create a stable and secure um, mind, body, spirit of who I am. Know that this is in trying to um, taking a class, taking a workshop, um, how can I integrate the changes that I am going through and how can I, how can I share, how can I connect with other people that are like-minded and it may not be through your job and your career, it will be searching like with other people far and wide. It, this will also be in a trine with your fifth house of uh, creation and bringing more joy and pleasure into your life. So um, a new these new goals, I, I absolutely love this, um, but, but it'll be difficult in order for you to like truly integrate the energy. This will be feeling like you're squashed, feeling like somebody is not valuing you, um, authority figures, bosses, um, this could be government, uh, power struggles, um, and these can be extreme forces. And you're going to have to say, I have to step into who I am. I have to know that I am going to be seen. This is my image. This is my identity. And this is who I'm bringing to the table. So Taurus, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, the Sun has just left your 11th house with the eclipse um, magnifying and expanding the area of your life of your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, and like synchronicity of bringing you in contact with these people, places, and things that uh, are to propel you into uh, fast forward into your future. So now with the sun now moving into your 12th house, it's about, I need stability, I need security, I need a safe space. The sun in the 12th house is 
um, reflecting your power, your confidence, you wanting to create a private sanctuary for yourself. It's going within and tapping into your dreams, your Akashic records. It's uh, getting rid of of uh, the 12th house can be self-sabotage. So getting rid of self-sabotage. The, the 12th house is where we go to sit and we, we're trying to integrate this energy. We go to be alone. And this is gonna be an opportunity for you to say, I need to create a, a home, a sanctuary. I need to meditate. I need to tap into what are my angels, my guides. What are my, um, like I need to be able to uh, sit alone and to do the inner healing and to connect with the divine about where is this journey taking me. Now, this is in a square to the planet of Pluto. Remember that squares need to be integrated. The energy is, it's a hard aspect. Pluto is the planet of, of deep transformation. And so the sun representing yourself, your identity, your authority, your power, and Pluto could bring power struggles. This is about power and control. It is in your, your ninth house of cross-cultural experiences, foreign people, places and things. It, it's in the house of, of, of wanting to publish something, legal matters, taking a class, uh, religion, spirituality. These two aspects coming together at this hard aspect, it could bring um, possible uh, power struggles about attacks on your personal integrity, about where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you think that you are that you could be doing this? Pluto is going to bring these extreme forces of what other people think and feel and believe. And these circumstances can literally bring this crisis or this, this breakdown in order to help you transform your ego, your identity, your life direction and say, no, that this, this is really what I need to do. This is for me. I choose this for me. The sun moving into Taurus is this beautiful time to say, I need to slow down and I need to integrate everything that I know, everything that I feel and everything that I believe. I need to ground it in and create a lot of stability with it. It is in a trine to your fourth house of your home, your family, your foundation. This is an opportunity for you to say, I need to choose me, I need to integrate the energy, I need to create a sanctuary, and I need to create a solid foundation for where I am transforming and evolving into. Um, I, need to, um, I need to look at my identity, my life direction, and I need to be able to master, um, I need to be able to master it myself with my own willpower. With these attacks, there can come this rebirthing process that can come out of this and it will uh, give you stronger willpower, uh, self-assertiveness that's going to enable you to say, no, these are my goals, this is what I stand to do, and this is my new sense of vitality and enthusiasm in order to create this environment of I can do anything and I can tap into my intuition, my guides. I can use things like my dreams, the Akashic records. I can use past life regressions. I can use my ancestors. I can use all of the things that create stability in my life. And that can be your, your family or like chosen family in order to create this stable, secure environment in order to grow and evolve into. So make sure that you take advantage of all that is offered from this. It's an opportunity to transform. It's, it's meant to not just frustrate, but to say, how do I integrate this in order for growth and experience? So Gemini, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, the Sun has now moved into your 11th house. I love this for you because the eclipse has just occurred in your 10th house of your career, 
uh, your job, your um, uh, being seen as an authority figure. It's fast forwarding what you're supposed to be doing for a legacy or the direction in which you are supposed to be moving forward and other people seeing you visually in the world. The 10th house is your ambition, it's your social status, and this eclipse is really propelling you to be seen and to move forward and to initiate. It's this Aries warrior energy. So now that we're moving, we, we've started these new beginnings with the eclipse. Now the sun moves into Taurus. It's saying now it's time to slow down and create some stability and security. It's time to ground in this energy and create things with it. The sun moving into your 11th house is what are your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals? Who do you network with? Who do you align yourself with in order to achieve these things? So the sun in Taurus here has you working with networking groups like star family, uh, where you want to volunteer. It's who do you want to connect up with or who do you align yourself with in order for you to uh, create stability, comfort and wealth. And so uh, the problem comes with Pluto. Uh, Pluto is in your eighth house of your shared resources. Pluto in the eighth house also is deep psychological uh, trauma and opportunities to heal and evolve and change through this. So the sun representing your sense of authority and power and saying, I want to initiate these things. I want to uh, be part of these groups. And Pluto says there's these power control, uh, push and pull um, struggles that you might have with, uh, it could be family, it could be, uh, it's, it's people that you have shared, um, shared resources with or joint ventures with. So this could be people that you work with or people that you have contracts with. And this could also be business partners and significant others. It also could be exes, like throw that into the mix because it's, uh, it could be child support and alimony or, or um, debt or wills. And so when you have these two areas of your life in a square, the square is saying, I'm bringing you these challenges in order for you to, um, to integrate them into your life. Um, these power struggles are about other people, other circumstances that are beyond your control and how do you, uh, how do you integrate them? This is about crisis and a breakdown in order for you to transform your ego, your identity, your life direction of who are you networking with? Who do you align yourself with? Who do you, like this could be um, with work associates, but it can also be um, uh, like your star family or your, your, the, the, your kindred spirits or your social circles. It could definitely challenge or change some of your, your social circles. And so this could feel like an attack on your personal integrity and look at it as this opportunity for you to uh, like rebirth and give you this healthier ego, healthier, uh, stronger willpower, um, being self-assertive with, no, this is where I'm going. This is what I want to do. And this is, this is who I am. And this is who I'm going to align myself with. And if that means that we part ways, then that means we part ways. If not, how do we integrate? How do we work together for the common goal? That would be the end all be all goal of having this challenging aspect and saying, we, we need to work together. And this is the goal. And so how can we work together on the same goal? Offering you vitality, enthusiasm, and creating this st uh, stable, secure environment, not just for yourself, but for the other people that you are um, deeply bonded with or in um, uh, joint ventures or in um, the, uh, sharing these resources um, for either business or pleasure with in your life. Uh, I, I love this for the communication aspect that it'll force you to, to think outside the box and to, um, to, use, to use your wits, but also to say, look, we need to both come to the table here. Let's make this a win-win situation and not just a power struggle. So Cancer, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and ticket updates as soon as they're released. Please subscribe.
So for Leo Sun and Leo Rising, I absolutely love this for you. Um, it is difficult, but I'm, I'm really loving it because you just had the nodal eclipse in your ninth house. That's foreign people, places, things, cross-cultural experiences. This is you taking classes and workshops. It's legal matters. It's publishing things. So it's really propelling you into the field of share your gift with others, gather information with others, learn from other people. What do they have to offer? What do you have to offer? It is, uh, it's it's you being out there in the outside world. Now you're going to take everything that you've learned and you're going to say, I now need to integrate this. I need to create some stability and security of what am I going to do with all of this information? I'm going to use this for my career, my job, my legacy. It's the direction in which you want to go. The 10th house is not only your ambitions and your reputations, but it's authority figures or you being seen as an authority figure. Now, this is in a square aspect with your 7th house, which is love, contractual relationships or agreements. I am going to throw in open enemies and exes because it is in a, a hard aspect, but the 7th house is it's clients, it's one-on-one -on -one relationships, it can be best friends, it can be significant others. I'm not looking at this as this negative. Um, the sun represents yourself, You're, you as an authority figure, you stepping into your power in the 10th house of an authority figure, um, you, what you want to achieve, your ambition, your social status, honors, awards, you literally being seen by everybody in the outside world. Now, Pluto represents power and control and these possible power struggles that you might have with either clients or partners or friends or significant others. And so this challenging aspect is how can we, how can we integrate so that it becomes this win-win situation? Pluto brings these extreme forces that it's, it's the other people's um, uh, thoughts and ideas and feelings that's like creating this crisis or this breakdown in your ego, your identity, your life direction. People just not believing in you, not saying that they have faith in you. Um, and it's going to be a challenge for you to say, um, okay, who goes to the wayside? How do I master um, integrating this energy of it's a personal attack on my integrity? Um, it's This is an opportunity for me to feel like I'm having this rebirthing uh, process for me to step into a healthier ego, stronger willpower, stronger assertiveness. What other people say about you is none of your business. If they, if it, let's say that it's best friends and significant others, it's how do you integrate? Um, and it might not be uh, them not having faith or belief in you, but it could be a challenging aspect of you growing by leaps and bounds and you having to share all of this growth that you are, are feeling and them understanding where you're coming from. Those are... Uh, the, those are the ways that you're going to want to like integrate. It's, it's not like coming at it. It's I want to attain my goals with a new sense of vitality and, and enthusiasm. I want to create this stable work environment. I want to, I want to bring you with me and I want you to understand where I'm going and what I'm doing. And if they don't understand, if they're not willing to be open to who you are changing and evolving and growing into, you're going to have some decisions to make about healthy boundaries with them. Um, I think that it can all be uh, like the majority of this can be worked out because this also changes and evolves um, clients that are brought into your life. This is about love, your negotiation skills, and you thinking outside the box and being creative with um, how can you how can you attain what you want to attain and get to where you want to be and um, not let these, um, sorry Jake, I'm, I'm just going to take a pause for a second. Not let other people's thoughts and ideas transform who I am. Pluto is help, helping me to uh, transform my ego, my identity, and my, my life by showing me 
other people's true colors. So Leo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo Sun and Virgo Rising, I love this for you that the sun is now moving into your ninth house. Now, you just had an eclipse that happened in your eighth house of shared resources. This has you moving in the direction of clearing out debt that you have shared with other people, a lot of deep psychological healing and trauma, and you're saying, all right, how can I take all of these fresh starts, new beginnings, clean slates, and it will move you forward by leaps and bounds. The sun moving into your ninth house is saying, I need to be stable. I need to be grounded. I need security with all of this new stuff that's moving towards me. Is that with, do I integrate it with other people who have the same faith and hope and belief with different religions and spirituality? Um, is it me connected to uh, cross-cultural experiences of other people who are going through the same thing? Is it taking a class? Is it taking a workshop? Is it creating things and having work published or is it legal matters? So the ninth house offers all these opportunities that have to do with prophetic dreams and visions and um, these, these foreign people, places, and things, and you saying that I need to find stability and I need to find security with the direction in which I'm moving forward with in my life because the eclipses are really... Um, pushing you forth in that area. This is going to reflect power and confidence and moving you towards that. The square comes with Pluto. Pluto is in your sixth house of, I need to take care of myself. It's my daily habits. I need to make sure that my mental, physical, spiritual health and well-being is taken care of and it could be with alternative health and healing. This could include tapping, this could in include yoga, meditation. The, the sixth house is self-care, uh, uh, illness and disease. And how do we how do we take care of ourselves? Now the pets, uh, your pets are also found here, but it's what can I do on a daily basis in order to care for myself, in order that I can be of service to other people also. And it's not giving of yourself too much. The square comes with Pluto saying, how do I integrate these two areas of my life? The sun represents your sense of self, you as an authority figure, you stepping into your power saying, I need to ground all of this new change that's that's happening to me. And Pluto is representing this power dynamic between these struggles between people wanting your attention or needing your attention or where you volunteer, where you give of service to yourself. And this could be your aunts, your uncles, um, authority figures with um, uh, counselors, mentors, guides. Um, it's who, th this is the house of where do you go to get support in order to um, feel healthy and step into your own uh, divinity. And so Pluto is going to be bringing these extreme forces of other people and their circumstances. And this could be like a crisis or a breakdown in the form of your ego, your identity, your, your life direction of I really need to do this. And how can I do this? This is for my this is for my health and well-being. I need to make um, I need to make meditation a daily practice. I need to I I don't know what your I statements are, but this is you saying I'm having this crisis that's going that's transforming my ego, my identity, my life direction, and it's a challenge that I have to master my power of where I want to go, what I want to do. And I feel like there's this personal attack on my integrity of the services that I bring to the table of not just taking care of myself, but of helping to take care of others where I volunteer. Um, I feel like um, that I'm not able to give enough. And so the square is how do you integrate that? How do you not give of yourself so much that you, you have to find this healthy balance between what you know, what you're learning, what you're sharing with also taking care of yourself. 
you have to make yourself the priority first. Um, this will be, this, this square is uh, feeling like you are personally being attacked and you saying, I have to step into my divinity. My ego will be healthier. My willpower will be stronger. I need to be more self-assertive with having these healthy boundaries. And I have to use the word no. Um, this is going to enable you to follow your goals. It's going to give you a new sense of vitality and enthusiasm in order for you to create this stable environment of this is this is where I want to travel to. This is what I want to create. This 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 is what I want to make happen. This isn't a trying to your first house of self. And this is you stepping into a new chapter of your life and saying, I can only be of service to you this much because I, the sixth house is if you are not in service of, to somebody, it could become of slavery and I feel like a slave of. And so that's the Pluto um, square is how do I integrate this that I feel like I'm still of service. I'm taking care of myself first. I want to help you but I don't want to become a slave either to my job or anybody else because I, I need to focus on me and my goals. And that's not healthy for me, not mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, uh, none of it. And I have to focus on uh, creating this stable, secure environment in order for me to create and build upon. So for Virgo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, the Sun is now moving into your eighth house. Um, it is taking the lessons that you've learned from the eclipse that occurred in your seventh house. Uh, the north node uh, eclipse in your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, love, contractual agreements. The seventh house is all about you negotiating and cooperating and propelling you into this area of your life. I love this for you because it's fresh starts, new beginnings, clean slates, and it was it's it's like a new moon on steroids so you've just had this and now the sun is saying we need to ground this in we need to make this stable we need to make this secure how do we take this relationship to the next level this contractual agreement to the next level how do i work to heal so the sun moving into your eighth house the eighth house is shared resources joint ventures it's the house of psychology it's where we have these connections with family members that are deep and psychological in nature or business partners or significant others or it's um, exes it could be like with alimony child support um, anything that you have in connection to other people in your life that could be um, uh, uh, private affairs or contractual agreements whether it's um, written or non-written now um, wanting the stable secure contracts uh, it this is reflecting power confidence and you wanting to create stability with wealth and comfort this could be investments um, remember this is the the money and resources that you have tied up in other people places and things so um, the sun represents yourself uh, authority you stepping into your power pluto is the square so pluto represents power control and possible power struggles it's in your fifth house of children or um, where you have taken risks it's the fifth house of affairs uh, the fifth house is uh, creativity art music um, it's where we experience risk it could be gambling the fifth house is where you want to do things and um, that bring you joy and pleasure but this is a square how do you integrate the these two energies the 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 pluto is saying i'm going to offer you some some power struggles that are either um, between um, you and creation and or you with children 
or you with intimate um, partners, or the fifth house is also with investments. The fifth house represents um, uh, anything that you uh, want to take a risk on and where you have taken a risk. So Pluto is bringing these extreme forces in the form of other people their circumstances and bringing this crisis and this breakdown moment. It's uh, forcing you to transform your ego, your identity, your life direction. Pluto is showing you this challenge so that you can master your own power and step into your divinity. It's who are you in these intimate relationships with, whether they're private or um, a contractual. This can feel like a personal attack on your integrity. Um, what can come from the integration of this is not a I get, you get. This is how can we integrate this because it's an it's a rebirthing process to give you a healthier ego, stronger willpower, more self, a stronger self assertiveness that will enable you to attain your goals and for you to have this new sense of uh, vitality and enthusiasm because you need to look at your environment, your security. The eighth house represents um, investments or contracts that you share with other people and this uh, this includes like business partners or significant others. Um, it's, it's just a deep psychological house. And so for the sun moving into this, it's saying, look, I need more security. I need more stability. I need to know that what we are doing is stable and secure. So we need to have these open lines of communication. And how do we go about doing this? And so there can be these power dynamics that offer this conflict. And this could be... Um, seriously between your personal relationships. So Libra, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, I love this for you because the sun is now moving into your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, negotiations, clients, one-on-one -on -one relationships. I am going to bring out open enemies and exes only because there is this square um, that needs to be integrated with what is going on. You just had this eclipse in your sixth house, um, bringing attention to health, your daily life, uh, where you need to put yourself and your daily habits first. Along with that, now you're moving uh, the sun as it moves into the sign of Taurus. It's about creating stability and security in the area of love, in the area of contracts, negotiations. The seventh house represents um, contracts and promises and negotiations, whether they're verbal or not. This is the house where we communicate with other people. So this has to do with you and other people and you needing stability and security in those relationships. It's going to reflect your willpower, your confidence, and you see saying, I need to create, uh, create stability, um, wealth, and comfort for myself in order to feel secure. Now the sun, it rep represents yourself, you as an authority figure, you stepping into your power. Uh, now Pluto, Pluto is in your fourth house of your home, your foundation, your roots. It can stand, it can represent real estate. It can represent your ancestors. It can represent anything, people that feel like family or anything that's brought in to feel like family. Um, it can also represent uh, real estate and property. It's literally the foundation of which you build your life upon. So if we look at Pluto representing power and control and these possible power struggles between family members or people that are at home, this can include parents or um, uh, people that you share these resources with. Pluto brings these extreme forces in order for you to um, push you outside of your comfort zone. It, ex it brings these crises or these breakdowns in order for you to have this opportunity to integrate the energy, to transform your ego, your identity, your life direction, in order of 
who you are with partner-wise, who do you get into contracts with, best friends, significant others. Um, This is going to be, if it's managed correctly, like this rebirthing process, giving you this healthier ego, a strong sense of of willpower, a sense of self-assertiveness. Remember that squares need to be integrated. It's not just your way with, with significant others or contracts or best friends and uh, forgetting about the your home, your family, your roots, your foundation. But how do I integrate by verbalizing, vocalizing, negotiating, look, this is what I need in order to feel secure. I do not want to give this up. And this could be this, 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 breakdown, this argument that comes between, um, this is a challenge and this will be an opportunity for you to show how you can step into your power and master your power of standing your ground and having healthy boundaries. Um, feeling like this is a personal attack on your integrity. And so I'm really encouraging you to find the balance and, um, look to the authority figures or look to yourself as the authority figure in this. Don't think of yourself as the child in some of these relationships because I think it can be the power dynamics between parent and um, like your parent or people who feel like family or having that used against you. And so needing to think about yourself first and saying, no, I I have to create this as a daily habit. I have to put me first. And Scorpio, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, the Sun is now moving into your sixth house. I love this for you because we just had an eclipse in your fifth house, really bringing attention to your life of where do you need to make fun, joy, pleasure, creativity, um, childlike activities, um, a daily practice in your life. This is in trying to your first house of self. Like this eclipse was really bringing the attention on to, to you and that you need to do this. Either your children, creating children or creating, um, giving birth to something. And so this could be giving birth to creative projects, like um, where you want to take risks. This is like living life to its fullest. Now that the sun is moving into the sign of Taurus, it's saying, I need to do this on a daily basis. I need to create stability and security in my everyday uh, living. The sixth house is what we do for our health and our wellness. It's also who we seek out to support us, mentors, guides, um, practitioners. This could be um, Reiki. This could be chiropractor. This could be sound therapy. Um, The sun moving into the sign of Taurus in your sixth house is offering you this opportunity of how can I make my self-care, my nutrition, my diet, um, alternative health care practices a daily thing in order for me to enjoy where I'm going. The the eclipses are really focused on you exploring joy and pleasure. And the sun moving into Taurus says, I need to ground it. I need to make this stable. Um, I need to step into my power and have this confidence to create comfort and wealth in my, my daily life. Now, the sun represents your self, um, authority, your power, Pluto. Pluto is the planet that represents um, control and possible power struggles. Pluto in your third house is your communication house. This represents siblings. Um, This could represent uh, your relationship with your neighbors, um, co-workers, and this is cousins and acquaintances. And this is uh, you feeling like Um, my sense of self, my sense of like, I feel like my integrity is being attacked here. Um, Pluto brings these extreme um, opinions of other people and yourself of where you're transforming and evolving into. Basically, it's like healing 
loving yourself, growing into it. And there's these other people's circumstances and that they're extreme. And this is going to be like a crisis or a breakdown moment in order for you to say, how can I integrate this? These are your thoughts. These are my thoughts. How can I share with you or not share? all of this information with you. Pluto wants to transform your ego, your identity, your life direction, and Pluto shows you this challenge so you can master your power. It is in a sextile to your first house of self. It is, it is offering you the opportunity of once I learn to um, integrate the way that I communicate, and this is communicating with people on a daily basis. This is phone, email, text, um, where you gather information and how you explore sharing information. Once you have um, mastered this, it's stepping into your power. It adds to it. So this will be like a rebirthing process of feeling like you have a healthier ego, um, stronger willpower, stronger assertiveness of saying, no, I need to, I need to go on this walk. No, my, my uh, counseling appointment comes first before I do anything else. No, I'm not going to break this appointment um, because of this. This is making your health and your daily practices uh, a priority and making sure that you um, uh, create this stable, secure environment to change and evolve and, and grow into and how are you sharing that with other people like it could be on the cranky side of just um, being blatant and mean like with authority figures and just saying no or um, tactfully using your words and so know that there could be um, Pluto does represent authority figures and this is, this is in your third house of communication so there could be some conflict here with um, people that you see as authority figures or people that you see or communicate with on a daily basis so Sagittarius I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, the Sun is now moving into your fifth house. I absolutely love this for you because this is transforming um, the eclipse that went uh, that happened in your fourth house. The eclipses have been going through your fourth and your tenth house, transforming you in the outside world. What do you consider um, your family? Uh, a strong foundation, property, real estate. Um, the fourth house represents people that feel like family. The fourth house represents um, your traditions. It represents uh, uh, those people that have shaped and built your life. And so you have just had this major eclipse in that area of your life, which could include a move. It could, it could include somebody moving out or something happening or transforming that area of your life. Now that the sun is moving into your fifth house, it takes that energy and says, um, I need to ground in I need to make fun, joy, pleasure, and risk-taking a, a daily practice in my life. I need to have more fun and joy and pleasure. The fifth house represents children or childlike activities. It represents creativity, art, and music. It represents gambling and affairs. The fifth house is romance, and it's what you want to do um, like on the weekends or on the evenings. It's how you want to spend your time when you have downtime. Now, um, the sun represents your sense of self, authority, your power, and saying, all right, I need stability, I need security, I I feel really good when I'm doing this, I, I need more play in my life, and, and this also could mean that I have a project, a side gig that I want to make money from, that I want to create wealth from. This is in trying to your first house of self, so this is um, you doing something for yourself, the square comes from your second house. Pluto in your second house is your self-worth, your cash, your property, your personal resources, your money, your income, your values, your opinions. And this is uh, literally uh, um, a transformation of 
oh gosh, it's all about power and it's about authority figures. Um, Pluto wants to have control and power. And so this is wanting to have control and power over your personal money, your personal assets, your personal resources, your skill set, your property, your opinions, your values. And so the sun in the sign of, of Taurus in your fifth house, there could be this conflict with what you want to do for joy and pleasure. There could be this conflict with children or um, with adult playmates or with lovers. The sun in your fifth house squaring your second house is, do I have the money or resources to do this? Or do I invest in this? Can I make money from this? There is definitely something that has to do with your opinions, your values, your skill set, your talent, and this is in a square. It's and how do I integrate this? Now, what's going to come from this? It could be uh, a personal attack on your integrity, your your money, your values. Um, Pluto brings these extreme forces that in the form of other people and circumstances that can bring this crisis or this breakdown in order for you to transform your ego, your identity, your life direction. Pluto shows you this challenge so that you can master it and step into your power. And so how do you integrate your own money, your own resources, cash, property, opinion, values, um, resources, uh, your attitude, your work ethic. How do you integrate that with play and joy and what you want to do, taking a risk? And so this could be um, a, an opportunity for you, say, for you to say, all right, I'm going to go through this rebirth of I'm going to spend this amount or I'm going to risk this amount or I'm going to be more self-assertive. I'm going to, I have the stronger willpower of, I, um, I want to move from this home or this has something to do with my children or I need to tap into more creativity with, with childlike activities. Um, the, the themes revolve around your goals and your sense of vitality and, and enthusiasm about what do you want to do and creating the stable, secure environment in order for you to grow, evolve, and change. So Capricorn, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, I love this because the sun is going to be moving into your fourth house of your home, your family, your roots, your traditions. It's the people that have built your home or feel like family. This is um, this could also be um, grandparents, like think about genealogy, people that feel like family, people that have shaped you. Now, what this is, the theme that this is building upon is the eclipse happened in your third house of communication. Um, uh, uh, this could be cousins and siblings and um, learning new things, taking classes, taking workshops, neighborhood, um, the way that you initiate communication. It's the relationship house, but it's also the house of communication. And so how do you say and do things? And this new moon, it was like a new moon on steroids because it was an eclipse and it was offering you this huge new beginning, fresh start, clean slate that will plant the seeds for the future. So now you know that you're going to be building upon what do you want to create? Um, taking a class, taking a workshop, like what do you want to create? It'll have something that has to do with you. It's the I statements. It could have to do with education. It could have to do with short distance travel. The sun always represents your sense of authority, um, your um, self, your power. Now, Pluto is the square. Pluto is in your first house of self. Now, this is where the square comes in. Pluto represents power, control, and po possibly these power struggles about this is what I want to do. 
This is what I have to do. How do I get from point A to point B? How do I transform myself? Pluto is in your first house of your outlook, of being seen, your strength, your habits. I consider the first house like your business card or your website of who you are sharing, who you are, who are um, bringing um, and, and showing the world of who you are. Pluto is going to bring these extreme forces in the form of other people, their circumstances, their thoughts, their opinions about what is your home? What is your foundation? What are you trying to create? Who are you? How are you communicating it? It brings these extreme forces that feels like it's a personal attack on your integrity. And it will feel like a crisis or a breakdown in order to transform your ego, your identity, and your life direction. This is about authority figures, uh, like literally putting the squash on you saying, um, this is what you have to do in order for you to attain what you want to attain. In order for you to be that authority figure, this is what you have to do. And so this will be taking a hard look in the mirror and saying, I need to go through this rebirthing process. I need to have a healthier ego, stronger willpower, stronger assertiveness. I want to create a strong home family foundation in which to build my life upon and where am I getting in my own way? And so um, it's a breakdown and it will have to do with your ego and your identity, but then it's also about building that back up once you've learned to integrate it and say that um, I can be my own worst enemy. I need to get out of my own way. I need to integrate and understand what are my faults and what are my gifts and talents and take my gifts and talents and build upon my faults in order to build that bridge to create the stability of. There is nothing in the chart that is all bad or all good. It is all a lesson in order to transform and grow and change from. And so this is going to be an opportunity for you to say, um, I'm in charge of this and I can reach my goals and I just need to integrate that energy. All right, so Aquarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, I love that the Sun is now moving into your third house. So you just had this eclipse that occurred in your second house. It was huge. It was a realignment of like where you're going, what you're doing. It was planting these major seeds in order for you to move forward with. Um, a new moon eclipse is like a new moon on steroids. It truly um, brings you forward by leaps and bounds. And this has to do with your self-worth, your cash, your property, your personal resources. It has to do with your money, your finances, your values, your opinions, uh, your financial condition, your income. So all of this is about moving forward. And so how do we take that information and now with the sun moving into your third house in the sign of Taurus being very earthy, solid, stable, and saying, I need to take these ideas and I need to communicate them accordingly. So I want to build up wealth. I want to be comfortable. The sun represents your sense of um, self and authority, your ego, your power. Now Pluto, it's in a square with Pluto. Pluto is in your 12th house. The 12th house represents um, hidden fears, self-sabotage, the um, on the uh, it's also hospitalizations and it's it could be rehab, it could be um, afflictions, institutions, but on the positive side, it can be dreams, the Akashic records, tapping into past lives, um, understanding and getting messages from angels, guides, ancestors, um, learning, knowing, and doing things behind the scenes. And so you are learning to transform that area of your life. Pluto in the 12th house is also like in this square is how, how do I not be my own worst enemy? How do I not self-sabotage myself as I move forward? I am worthy. These are my goals. I can do this. 
Pluto represents power and control and these possible power struggles between yourself and others and the way that you are communicating with others. Sun in the third house can represent your relationship with your siblings, your neighbors, your cousins, how you communicate with people um, in your everyday life. This could be in the grocery line. It's the third house is how you say and do things to others in order for you to talk and exchange. And so this square is how do I um, how do I share my thoughts and my ideas? Pluto brings these extreme forces um, with these possible power struggles that you might feel like it's an attack on your personal integrity of how can you think that? How can you believe that? Do you really think that you can do that? Like having the North Node in your second house is really going to expand your values, your opinions, your cash, your self-worth. I, I absolutely love this. And the third house is... Uh, in this square saying this is a this is an attack on my my identity of who I am what I what my what I value how I what I bring to the table and how I communicate this and this is an extreme in forces of other people's um, circumstances and you possibly believing it and the 12th house is also hidden enemies people that will not support your growth and so bringing these um, forces together it offers you this crisis and this breakdown as pluto wants to transform your ego it wants you to step into your divinity what do you have at your uh, what, what do you have at your beck and call your intuition your guides your ancestors um, receiving messages feathers coins songs synchronicity angels guides how do you use this when you communicate and step into um, mastering your power um, this is going to be a rebirthing process to give you a healthier ego a stronger um, uh, a stronger willpower it's about being self-assertive enabling you to attain your goals with this new sense of vitality and enthusiasm in order for you to create this stable secure environment with who you communicate with on a daily basis and how you communicate communicate your thoughts and your ideas and knowing it feeling it and believing it and that's believing in yourself all right so Pisces I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m eastern standard time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations for private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe